good timing. You can feel free to join me if you like. Hi, ladies. Welcome back to the channel. I'm Yanka, your Christian fitness trainer, prayer warrior, and vegan nutrition specialist. And I am so glad you're here. So tonight we're going to talk about clean versus unclean eating according to scripture. But before we get started, as always, we're going to pray first. Father, in the name of Jesus, Father, we thank you for you because you are the center of our lives and our worlds. And Father, we want you to know that we love you and we thank you for loving us. We thank you for your new mercies daily, Father. We thank you for your covenant with us, Father. We thank you that you do not break covenant, that you are faithful. Father, I thank you that your word goes forth and accomplishes all that it is sent out to do. Father, think through my thoughts, speak through my mouth. Father, may your word go forth and Father, provide knowledge so that the just, your people can be delivered in Jesus' name. Amen. All right, ladies, let's get into it. So we're going to start with the definition of food first. Let's first define that before we get started or go any further, I should say. Um, so food is defined as any nutrition, nu any nutritious substance that people or animals eat or drink or plants absorb in order to maintain life and growth. All right. So those key words, life and growth. Hey, Sierra. Thanks for jumping on. Good to see you as always. <laughs> oh, yeah, I have to forgive him. My husband is so silly. He just <laughs> does need to distract me. Um, <laughs> and the second definition, material consisting is <laughs> essentially a protein, carbohydrate, and fat used in the body of an organism to sustain growth, repair, and vital processes to and to furnish in, uh, energy. So those are two definitions. And remember that food it um, sustains growth, repair, and vital processes to furnish energy. So it's for energy in your body for you to be able to, you know, move and do stuff. And it's for the maintenance of your life and growth. All right. So that's what food is. And God, in all his wisdom, he knows this. All right. So as we get further, just remember that this is what food is. And then some synonyms for, for food is nourishment, sustenance, nutriment, subsistence. Um, fair bread and daily bread. So those are your synonyms. And keep this in mind as we read through um, Leviticus 11. So that's what we're going to read through um, that. And you'll also find this in um, Deuteronomy 14, but you can go read that and study that on your own, but they they mirror each other. They're the same, but we're going to um, read through Leviticus 11. But before we get there, I just want to go um, to Genesis 129. And so I'm going to read that from my, I think I'm going to read this from my New King James Version. I think. So years ago, um, I read a testimony from this guy who healed himself where he got healed. I can't say he healed himself. But you know, God is the source of all healing. But um, his mom uh, had cancer and, he, you know, he watched her go through that process. And he ended up having it. And he was like, I'm not doing that. So he, um, you know, through scripture, found Genesis 129, changed his diet to that, completely healed. And so he came up with the hallelujah diet. His name is uh, George, Reverend George Malcolmus. And so that's kind of how I, you know, studied, started to, you know, look at his stuff. And that got me on a whole trail of focusing on nutrition just from his testimony. But anyway, Genesis 129, it says, um, and God said, see, I have given you, and I'm reading from the New King James Version. See, I have given you every herb that yields seed, which is on the face of all the earth, and every tree whose fruit yields seed, to you it shall be for food. So this first diet that was given, it was pretty much a plant-based. That's what God gave them, okay? And keep in mind that their bodies, what Adam and Eve had, <laughs> does not is not the same that, well, as what we have um, because of sin and all of that. And then the atmospheres, all of that is different. So those are things to take into account. But when it comes down to it, this is the best thing for you. Cause this, you know, God is the same yesterday, today and forever. So if he gave us something back then, it's still good for us now. So, you know, more, 
whatever we eat, you want the bulk of your diet to be what he said here in Genesis 129. Okay. And so that, like I said, that's plant-based stuff, your fruits and your vegetables, and you are better off eating things as close to nature as possible. Okay. So let's move on. So that's Genesis 129 that he gave to them. Then you get down to Genesis 9, 3 through 4. So let's go there. And that's when Noah, that's with Noah. Okay. So I'm going to read again from my New King James Version. If I, okay. Every morning, I mean, every moving thing that lives shall be food for you. All right. So before, and we just read, it was um, the, the fruit and vegetables. Um, now it's saying every moving thing. Okay. I have given you all things, even as the green herbs. So you can have the, you know, anything that moves, you know, the animals, some of the insects and all that. And then now you can have the herbs or the uh, stuff that grows from the ground and trees and all that. But you shall not eat flesh with its life. That is the blood. So no eating um, uh, animals with the blood in it. Okay. So that was the second diet that we've seen. Now we're going to move on to um, Leviticus 11. Okay. So let's move on over there. Now we're going to actually read through this. <laughs> okay. Um, now the Lord spoke to Moses and Aaron saying to them, speak to the children of Israel saying, these are the animals which you may eat among all the animals that are on the earth. Among the animals which divides the, divides the hoof, having clo cloven hooves and chewing the cud that you may eat. Okay. Nevertheless, these you shall not eat among those that chew the cud or those that have cloven, cloven hooves. The camel, because it chews the cud but does not have cloven, cloven hooves, is unclean to you. The rock hyrax, because it chews the cud but does not have the cloven, cloven hooves, is unclean to you. The hare, because it chews the cud, but does not have cloven, cloven hooves is unclean to you. And the swine, <laughs> though it divides the hoof, having cloven, cloven hooves yet does not chew the cud is unclean to you. Now, let me just pause here for a second. All right. Cause I know some people love their pork and their, you know, um, bacon and all that, but God tells us things for a reason. Like he is the designer and he's the creator. He's the manufacturer. So he knows how we work optimally. And so he tells us this list of things without getting into detail. He gives us a list of these things. Don't eat these things. All right. And he always gives you a reason why. That's why I always ask, okay, why did God say this? Father, why did you say this? And if you go and, you know, just dig a little, do a research, you know, a little bit of research, just a little bit, you'll find, you know, even when the, the people who work with pigs, they actually wear these full suits and things to uh, because of the, they, they are toxic. You know, pigs eat any and everything. These wild boars and stuff, these swine, they eat hair, bones, bodies, feces. They eat it all. They are they're just to me <laughs> nasty, <laughs> you know, but and then you look like how bacon and pork is readily available. Right. And it's in everything. And it's really inexpensive. But yet these people who are working with these things, they have to protect themselves. You know, you just have to pause and think about that. Then they have to wash up after the, you know, they, after they've been working with these things. And so, and then the, another thing about pigs is that they don't have sweat glands. So they are eating all of this stuff, right? So they eat the, the worst of the worst, the best, they eat everything. And so now they don't have sweat glands. So we have sweat glands. We can release, release toxins and things from our bodies. They can't do that. So you go and you partake of this thing. They haven't, and this is still in them. This is in their bodies. This gets trapped in there. They're not eliminating this stuff out of their bodies. So you partake of this. And what do you think it does do to your body? It begins to wreak havoc. That's what it does. That's why God said, don't eat these things. These things eat stuff um, on, on their, their scavengers and things. They eat the, the worst of the dead stuff. They eat that stuff. So you are the temple of God. What makes us think that God wants to share, you know, this stuff? And it's why, why do we think that? Let me just pause for a minute to read what Sierra said. Yes, my mom said my grandfather ate a lot of pork and that contributed to his poor health. Yep. And he died young in his 40s. Oh, my goodness. This is such a good point. So pork was something my mom would not buy. Let me see. That is so smart of your mom. And like, I didn't grow up eating it either. And by the grace of God, you know, my mom, 
was, you know, she was kind of ahead of her time and she actually paid attention to this stuff. So I didn't eat much meat. Um, we ate chicken and fish. That's pretty much it. <laughs> Occasionally a hamburger, but this, this is pretty much what we ate. But, you know, it was these things that's in scripture, you know, that's, you know, don't eat that. But she was especially against pig and swine. And then, like, I remember one time I walked into, um, I don't know, my grandfather, somewhere I walked into somebody's house and it smells so bad. And I was like, what? You know, and I was a little kid. I'm like, what is that? And I had sense enough to know that something smelled that bad. I didn't want to eat it. And it was the pig intestines. And um, if you go in the store, they call it chitterlings, but black people call them chitlins. I, I've never eaten them. I just can't get beyond the smell. But, but, you know, if you like your pork and swine, I just pray, I pray, I pray, you know, for knowledge, you know, to, for this knowledge to deliver you from that because it's not good from the, for the body. That's just the bottom line. And so we want to get away from those things. And, you know, you want to take God seriously, take him at his word. You know, if he tell us these things, we want to be obedient, you know, because with obedience. I mean, he told when he was giving the law to the children of Israel, he told them, he said, children, um, be obedient to your parents. So your days may be long upon the land. Well, it's the same thing. Be obedient to your father that your days may be long upon the land. So let's continue um, reading. So verse eight, their flesh, you shall not eat and their carcasses, their bodies, their dead bodies, you shall not touch. They are unclean to you. These you may eat of all that are in the water. So we've gotten through the um, the animals. So before I progress, so let me just give you a little bit more, a list, okay, um, of the things before we move to the uh, things in the water. So these were the animals, the uh, fish in the sea, I mean, before we get to the fish of the sea. So these are, I'm gonna go over the clean animals, and this is not, by no means an exhaustive list, but it just gives you an idea of you know, things that have the split hooves and um, chew the cud. So you have um, antelope, buffalo, caribou, you have elk, gazelle, goat, um, ibex, which are wild goats, uh, moose, ox, uh, reindeer, and sheep. So these things are all on the clean list. Now we're going to move to the unclean. So you have that are not good for your health and, and, and not just not good, they're detrimental. And so just because like, think about it, you always go back to the garden. He told them the day you eat of this fruit, you shall surely die. And so we didn't see them just drop off, you know, just pass on and die in that way, but it's killing you and killing them. I won't say you, but it's killing, killing them. And this is what happens too. the day you eat up these foods, you are surely dying. It's, it's slowly, you know, God is not a, he told me that years ago, I'm not a vain babbler. Listen to my word. Listen to what I'm saying. Don't dismiss any word. Right? So those are the clean ones. Now here's a list of unclean ones that are detrimental. And that's the word I like to use detrimental to your health. And just because you don't see it immediately, God is not mocked. Whatever a man sows that he shall also reap. And so you're sowing. When you're eating, you're sowing. You're sowing day in and day out. You're going to reap a harvest. So it behooves us to eat the things on the clean list. All right. So now these are unclean things. Armadillo, donkey, bear. Um, I don't even know what I wrote there. Boar, cat, dog, horse, monkey, possums. Again, a pig, <laughs> the bacon, the pork, the lard is included in that. Uh, rabbit, rat, slugs, snails. So my people from the Car Caribbean blood like me, I like, you know, Caribbean food, but um, escargot and conch, no good. <laughs> right. That's not that's on the unclean list. Worms. And uh, if you look on, I think it's the who one of those websites I was on, they're trying to push this insect thing. <laughs> And uh, wait, we'll get into that in a minute. But um, these are the list of the unclean um, camel, coney. So don't eat any of these things on this list. And some I'm going to find to post this so you'll have this. And, and some of the resources that I use, I'll link it as well so you'll be aware. All right. Now let's move on to, let's continue to read. These you may eat of, so this is verse nine. These you may eat of all that are in the water. Whatever in the water has fins and scales. So that's your, your standard. It has to has, have uh, fins and it has to have scales. Whether in the seas or in the rivers that you may eat. But all in the seas or in the rivers that do not have fins and scales, all that move in the water or any living thing which is in the water, they are an abomination to you. 
abomination. That's a strong word. You know, these uh, um, abomination is more, it's like a disdain or disgust. This thing is not good for you in any way. All right. Things that are to be hated. Right. They shall be an, uh, an abomination to you. You shall not eat their flesh. So this is not on the list of good things to eat, but you shall regard their carcasses as an abomination. So don't even touch them, even their body, you know, the dead bodies. Whatever in the water does not have fins or scales, they shall be an abomination to you. So you steer clear of these things. All right. So let's pause right here. So he, we went over the animals, right? The land animals. Now we were in, we were in the water animals. So let's look at the water. And this is the list that I have for you. Um, so we have um, albacore. The, now this is the good list. These are clean foods. These are things that you can eat that's on the list. And like I said, not, not by any means exhaustive, but just to give you an idea, um, buffalo fish, carp, cod, crappy, haddock, halibut, herring, mackerel, mahi-mahi, um, you know, I'm just thinking about things that's been on the menu in different restaurants that we, you know, you've probably gone to, um, pike, salmon, sea bass, tarpon, tuna, flounder. So these things are all good. Barracuda. Um, I grew, uh, grew up in a Caribbean household. So, um, we like our bar barracuda <laughs> that's on the list, um, bass, anchovies. So these things are all clean. Okay. Now let's get on the unclean, um, Ooh, the unclean fish and uh, marine animals. OK, so uh, my stuff with some toes, but that's OK. I'm going to always give you the truth no matter what. OK, so there's catfish, clam, crab, <laughs> um, crayfish, crayfish, dolphin, eel, lobster. So you see these on the menus everywhere. You know, um, Maine, we would go to Maine into um What's the other place? Martha's Vineyard. And so these places have fresh, very fresh um, sea animals, right? <laughs> I can't think of the name, but this is like right on the menu. So you, you'll sit on the restaurant right down the ocean. You can see the stuff bought and they cook it for you and all that. And even where my vacation home is, it's the same thing. It's just like um, that they bring you stuff fresh right off of the ocean. But, you know, the lobster, these things that you think are good and you pay your money for, um, they are on the unclean list. OK, marlin mussels, that's on the list. Octopus, oysters, that's a big thing that you see on, um, on, on restaurant menus. Scallops, shark, shrimp. Shrimp is a big one as well. People love their shrimp. <laughs> but um, I, I got off that very easy because I began to see that in my mind as like a sea roach. And I'm like, oh, my God, <laughs> it's like disgusting. So I was able to get, you know, get over that. Um, squid. In other words, calamari. So you'll see that on the menu, um, swordfish. So these are some things that are not good for you that you'll go into the restaurant and you'll see, and you have to have, you know, this is why it's important to read and to study scripture because you know, you know, even though these things are permissible and I see them when I go out and everything, they're on the menu and you would think they were good, but they're not according to scripture. These things are unclean. They're not to be um, partaken of. They're not to go into your temple. So. <laughs> <laughs> the roaches are the sea. Yep. <laughs> see, are you right? <laughs> so nasty. <laughs> but you know, you see roaches just uh, does one of the things make your skin skin crawl. But uh. so let's continue on. All right. So you have your um, unclean and your clean of sea and sea animals. So now we're going to um, move on down to your birds. Okay. So this is verse thirteen. And these you shall regard as an abomination among the birds. And again, that's a strong word, abomination. He didn't say, you know, this is shall, you know, you shall not eat these things. He didn't just leave it that you don't eat these things. He said these are an abomination. And if you read in Proverbs, it talks about the seven things that are an abomination to God. You know, and abominations make you want to, you know, throw up because he said, you know, these things I'll spew, spew out of my mouth, you know. And so that they are very strong. These are the things that God hates in according to Proverbs, but he's telling us these are an abomination to us. And so, and then, you know, you, if you think about um, some of the different allergies people have, like shellfish and, you know, different things like that, um, you know, it's, it's probably a reason to that, you know, you were meant to consume that. I had a friend in high school, she um, 
had a shellfish allergy and it just caused her to break out in hives and just all these different things. So that to me, that's a sign that, you know, I probably should not be eating this. Okay, verse 13, and these you shall regard as an abomination among the birds. They shall not be eaten. They are the an abomination, the eagle, the vulture, the buzzard, the kite and the falcon after its kind, every raven after its kind, the ostrich, the short eared owl, the seagull and the hawk after its kind, the little owl, the fisher owl and the screech owl, just stay away from the owls, the white owl, the jackdaw and the carrion vulture. The stork and the heron after its kind, the hoop, hoopo and the bat. So that and this, you know, the scripture gives you a list of in it of itself um, birds that are um, not good, that are an abomination, as the scriptures say. But let's look at some birds that are actually clean. That makes the clean list. Okay, so we have um, chicken, dove, duck, goose, grouse. Um, guinea fowl, partridge, peafowl, pheasant, pigeon, prairie chickens, ptarmigans, quail, sage hen, sparrow, and other songbirds, swan, teal, and turkey. So these are clean birds that are um, okay, um, okay to eat. Now your unclean birds, bat, I just can't even wrap my head around my internet. I don't want to eat a bat, but that's just me. Uh, buzzards, Crow, eagle, and again, the scripture gave us gave us a quite a full list. Um, gull, hawk, heron, ostrich, owl, and we started, heard about we read about all these different owls. Just stay away from them. Um, penguin, raven, seagull, vulture, and you know God in all His wisdom, He gives us these things for a reason because these things, a lot of these birds, like the um, the the buzzard these things in the vulture so they eat dead things they're eating the scum of the earth just like the things that we went over in the sea those things are bottom feeder feeders they eat the scum and the dead stuff of the sea so you don't want to take partake of these things and put them in your body because your body is the temple of god he said you know you were bought with the price we are not our own so he's telling you how to take care of this temple so you know, we take God in his word and eat accordingly, you know, take care of this temple in this way, you know, to eat these things. This is so simple in my mind, you know, to me, okay, you eat this, you don't eat this, you know, um, if you eat this, this causes the, even though you don't see it, like I said, you go back to the garden, the day you eat there, you shall surely die. And it's the same thing with these things, but it, you don't see, you know, you just kick over and fall over, but it's, you know, you, you've sown a seed and you're sowing these seeds daily and eventually a harvest is going to come forth. All right. So let's move on. So now we're going to the <laughs> insects. <laughs> and again, I'm not an insect person <laughs> by any stretch of imagination, but you can eat some of them. All flying, and this is verse 20, all flying insects that creep on all fours shall be an abomination to you. Now on the, I think it's the Royal Health Organization, they're trying to push insects. Like in the last couple of years, you've seen this push about, you know, eating insects, different, you know, having insects different kind of ways, not just, they kind of make my skin crawl, but um, you there. So he said, these are an abomination to you. Yet these now there are some that you can eat and it's very limited. So he says, yet these you may eat for every eat of every flying insect that creeps on all fours. Those who have which have jointed legs above their feet with which to leap on the earth. These you may eat. So that's it. The ones with the the ones with the jointed legs above their feet with which to leap on the earth. These are um, you may eat. The locust after its kind, the destroying locust after its kind, the cricket and its um, after its kind, and the grasshopper after its kind. But all other flying insects which have four feet shall be an abomination to you. So those I thought it was interesting. You know, as I'm reading through this, and he, you're only pretty much allowed to eat these uh, grasshoppers and crickets and the locusts. And in Joel 22, 25, he said, you know, um, I will restore to you the years that these locusts, you know, these Palmer, he was naming these things have eaten. And I just thought that was so interesting that you can turn around these things that came and stole from you. You can actually eat these. So you can go back and look at Joel 225. It, it names the different um, locusts and the things that um, came and devoured from them. But those are the only thing, grasshoppers, locusts, 
um, that are uh, that God considers edible. OK, nothing else. OK, anything, everything makes an unclean list with the exception of the locust and the grasshopper. That's it. OK, and the cricket. That's it. They're all part of the same family. OK. Um, by the now I'm going to read uh, verse 24. By these you shall become un unclean. Whoever touches the carcass of any of them shall be unclean until evening. So maybe I'll stop there. But I'm going to name a few other things because you can go back and read all of 11 yourselves and just study that. But um, let me just read a couple of other ins uh, animals that, you know, I've seen on menus in different places that are actually not clean, according to scripture. You have the alligator and the crocodiles, frogs, like people eat frog legs, um, lizards, um, snakes, <laughs> people eat snakes, um, toads, and turtles. You know, stay away from those things, okay? Those are those... You should be in bed. Do they eat elephants? No, that's not on here. I'm sure some people do, but I don't. Fish we don't. Too. Okay, go ahead, baby girl, go to bed. And so, I love you. <laughs> um, so those things, you know, God is very clear in how we should eat. You know, it's very, very clear. Yeah, leave those in there. No, leave those in there. No, no. Um, he's very clear. You know, these, if you're going to eat meat, because I think uh, meat, I'm not all against meat, even though I'm a um, vegan nutrition specialist. I don't, I'm not against meat because if it's in the scripture, it's, if it's good by God, it's good by me, you know. Okay, Sierra said in Florida, they sell gator on the side of the road, baby. <laughs> wow. Oh, no thanks. No things. But I know people eat, you know, they actually eat these things. And I just, you know, I'm, I'm very basic in my eating, <laughs> very basic, but, you know, try to keep it within the par parameters of scripture, you know, taking care of your, of your health. And if you eat any of this, these things, there's, you know, no feeling bad about it. You just, you know, father, help me because some things, you know, we get, um, we can feel condemned about things, but God is not in the business of condemnation. As much as you want, you may want to change your diet or improve it. God is rooting for you. That's what he wants you to do as well. That's why I come on here to, you know, give you scripture about, you know, um, what the scripture says about things, because there's so many diets out there's they, they, every kind of diet. I mean, you know, and the thing with those, it's always they're they're, they're like, um, you know, I don't want you to be tossed to and fro. This is like the diets are like every wind and wave of doctrine. That's what diets are. But this book, the, the um, Bible is your firm foundation. And the thing is, you know, as I've studied different diets and things, and especially like Christian people and how, how they were healed, they always got the healing out of scripture. I, I read a testimony of this lady, her husband, like he began to lose all of his different functions to the point where he couldn't walk and he was bed, in bed all day. And she said, you know, I was praying. I said, Lord, what, you know, what am I to do? She was, you know, a um, um, health, health person, you know, fitness instructor person, all of that stuff. And she, she was keeping, they were eating a low fat diet. That's what it was. And she said, God began to highlight to her in the scripture, fat, 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 you know, everything she read, she was zoning in on fat. And so she began to add foods, you know, with fat in it. And her, her husband was totally healed and recovered from that totally real. So, you know, there are things in scripture, you know, people need me. Some people need me, you know, some people need different things. God knows, he knows what we need. He needs, he knows individually what all of us need. And so, you know, it behooves us to, you know, pay attention. And then if you find that you, you're eating things that are on the unclean list, you know, move toward, try, you know, begin to eliminate those things. You know, you love, you have a stronghold with any of these things in this father break this stronghold off of my life, you know, because I want to please you. And that's what it comes down to. We don't want to be, we don't want our God, our, our God to be our bellies. We don't want um, that to be, we don't want that to be an idol to us. You know, if God says something, we want to be obedient to what God says. You know, we want to walk in faith with wh what he says, you know, even when it comes to what we put into our bodies, what we eat, you know, he, he is, like I said, he's the maker. He knows what, how we will thrive. And so we want to, you know, get in alignment with that. 
because in um, Psalm 91, 16, he says, with long life, he satisfies you with long life. So God gives us long life, but we're the ones who chop away at it when we begin to do things against what he has already outlined for us. So we want to, you know, become come into alignment. He's not saying don't eat your meat or don't eat this and don't eat that. You know, I give you all the vegetables. He didn't limit any of them. Eat your vegetables, eat your fruit, eat it, you know, but these things don't eat these because they are detrimental to your health. This is not nourishment to your body. This is not going to help you grow. You know, this is not going to do those things. So don't eat these things. So ladies, that's all I have. <laughs> I'm going to, to put this list somewhere, you know, so you will have, like I said, an idea of what is clean and what is unclean and just look at your own diet and just begin to eliminate these things because you no, know, God wants you healthy. God wants you whole. And a lot of the aches and pains and the different things you deal with in your body, it comes from things that probably that we shouldn't be eating or we probably eating too much of. So overeating can be, um, uh, do a number on your body. And so can eating the wrong things, you know, the, um, things that don't make God's list. And so you always want to come back to what God says, because like, I, like I said, I looked at these diets and I'm looking at keto and all of these other different ones that are out there, low fat and all that. Um, it's, they're not scripturally based, you know, even though, you know, you'll get a result, you will get a result. Anybody who, um, followed, you know, whatever diet you'll get results. However, at some point, if you're sowing seeds where he said, these things are unclean, then you're going to end up reaping a harvest from that. Okay. So I want you to sow good seeds into your body so you can reap a harvest of health. You want to reap your harvest of long life. Okay. So that's all I have, ladies. Thank you so much for watching. Um, Sunday is, I will be, today is Saturday. Wow. I have, this week has been, I have had a busy week. <laughs> I cannot believe it's like Sunday tomorrow, but anyway, it'll be the schedule for the week. Um, what you can look forward to. And usually Mondays is the verse of the week and you take those verses and you personalize them. You know, you say them over and over again, you know, you build yourself up on your most, most holy faith. And the scripture talks about faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word of God. So speak this word, you know, just have it, have it plain, take one verse and just meditate on that and speak it out of your mouth. That's why I put those up. I, before I will always do declarations and I may do that again, but right now it's just the Bible verses and just put in your eyes because he told Joshua, Joshua, you want to make your way successful. You keep this before your eyes. You meditate on my word day and night. And so that's why, you know, you'll always see scripture here in some form. Um, Wednesday, it'll be another standing Pilates workout. And then Friday, um, I don't know which one is going to, I have everything pre-posted, but you'll have another, um, uh, recipe or something that has to do with, um, eating. And then next week, next Saturday, we're going to talk about, um, food combining food combination. So Sierra, thank you very much for that idea. Cause that totally came through the conversation with you. So thank you so much. But anyway, ladies, you have a blessed, um, rest of, uh, rest of your weekend and a blessed weekend. We will, I will see y'all again together, uh, next, uh, next Saturday. So talk to y'all soon. God bless. I love you. Bye. Thank you, Sierra.